Years ago, being a homicide detective was one of the most prestigious positions on the police department. A lot of us, we didn't want to take the exams to be sergeants, lieutenants, captains, or above. We wanted to be homicide detectives. It was just something about working at homicide that just was, it, for me, it was just so cool. And I thought when I arrived at homicide, the first thing I would be doing is investigating homicides. No, my partner told me that the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to learn how to deal with death. And at the time, it didn't mean anything. I like, what do you, I, I don't understand. I'm here to investigate homicides. He said, no, you're gonna handle natural deaths, which meant the cases were baby deaths, suicides, um, overdoses, um, heart attacks. I mean, just anything not involved with homicides, that's what I was gonna handle when I first got there. So for the first three months, that's all I handled. Even though I was assisting in homicide cases, my primary um, responsibility was to handle the naturals and our squad. So that's what I did. I mean, most definitely I was, you know, sort of, I would say not messed up about that, but you know, he had a great point that it was important to understand death. If you don't understand death, how can you go out there and look at a body when you investigate homicides? You can't understand how things work when it comes to deaths. So I remember one case in particular. Matter of fact, I believe it was my first natural death that I handled. At the time, my partner, J.C. Young, he was not there, so I was with Detective Treadwell. And um, I don't know why we separated, but I know I ended up going to a location, um, Upper Northwest, nice neighborhood. I pulled into the block. The smell was just something I would never forget. It was unbelievable. I mean, it was just something. It smelled like being over blue plains. It was, it was just horrible. But as I'm sitting in the car, I look up to the address where I'm about to enter. And the doors open, and an elderly white gentleman came to the door and was standing there. And he saw me get out of my car. He just looked at me and walked back into the house. So I started walking towards the address. And the smell is still coming and coming and coming. Here it is, we're talking like late June, early July. And as I got up them steps, it's like the front of his door was just like, you would think like bodies just hanging everywhere because of the smell. So I walk into the house and I remember learning, doing some of my you know training with how to deal with deaths and everything that you never can just think everything is a natural death. You can't think everything is a homicide. You have to really look at your scene. I mean, just everything. So I um, walk into the house, large house. Can't find the old man. I'm calling him out. I don't hear anything. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? I continue to walk around. And when I finally started going up the, the steps to the next level, I could see him standing at the top of the stairs. I said, sir, I'm Detective Mitch Cradle. I'm here in reference to a call we got about a possible death. He just walks away. And he's an older gentleman. I don't have anyone else in the house. So I'm not paranoid or anything like that. I'm just trying to figure out what, what the hell is going on. So as I finally get to the top of the stairs, I turn and I see him down the hallway. I walk towards him. Then he started walking towards me. I said, sir, is everything okay? I'm here to help you. All he said was, she's in the room. And I'm like, she's in the room, okay? So he walks past me and he kept walking. I said, excuse me, sir, um, can I get your name? He said, she's sleeping. I'm like, what the hell do you mean she's sleeping? So I'm like, why? No one is asleep, I can, I can smell something. So I can, just, I can tell, he, maybe he's in a dementia state, something's going on with him. So I, but I still need to see what was going on if I could uh, deal with him. So I, I walk quickly down the hall to the room. And when I walk into this room, oh man, when I walk into this room, I'm looking over at the bed where the, 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 the body is. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Half her body is missing, okay? I don't know if you're familiar with maggots, how they, you know, form on the inside of, you know, dead bodies, humans, animals. But half of her body, like here on over, I mean, just like here on over, just like, just half of it. 
is gone. You can see the maggots just steady moving and chewing it. And I'm sitting there like, whoa. I've never in my life seen anything like this before. So I'm yelling out to the gentleman, sir. And he finally walks back towards me. I'm like, do you see what's going on in this room? He said, she's sleeping. I said, no, sir, she's not sleeping. And I know right there something is, something is going on with him. So I know he's not a threat. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna deal with him, but right now I have to go and deal with her. So I go back into the room. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it was like a horror movie. No lights, just the you know, light coming in from the outside. She was in like a shaded area. I'm walking real slow. I got my, my shoes on, my slacks, my, my tie. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm dressed, tie, I'm, you know, I'm dressed for church. So as I'm walking towards her, and the closer I get, it's, it just felt like the maggots were just like ready to jump on me. And I'm like, oh shit. So um, I finally get maybe five feet away from her and I'm just staring at her. And the maggots was just, man, it was like they was just having a party on her. They were just steady eating and chilling. I mean, oh my God. And I'm like, this is, this is homicide? And it, 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 it totally freaked me out. And, but those situations prepare you for when now you're dealing with child deaths, when you're dealing with murders of people you know. You, when you can deal with this situation that I'm, I was on at that particular moment, looking at that body and having to handle that is something that just prepares you moving forward. So that scene just, just helped me deal with a lot of other things I was doing in the police department to come to dealing with bodies and stuff. So um, the, you know, the enemy's wagon, they came, it was just me and them. By this time, I'm dressed in white jumpsuit, gloves, and everything's covered up on my face because I explained to the um, enemy technician that, you know, Mag is all in the body, so he wanted to come prepared, and I told him to bring me some stuff because I didn't have anything. So I had to physically help him lift this body up and put it inside the bag. It freaked me out, but it's part of the job. And those are things that get you ready to becoming a homicide detective. That is what gets you ready to become the murder police. You just don't jump into investigations. You have to crawl before you walk. Another case I remember responding to was um, down on 17th Street, 17th S Northwest. Um, got a call for an unconscious person. We go up to the floor. Um, we can see a lot of steam coming from the apartment. Once we was able to gain entry inside the apartment, it was just steam everywhere. Right away, I you know checked the bathroom. I could see that the shower was steady running, all hot water. I re moved the curtain, turned the shower off. Now I'm like, what's going on? We look around the apartment, we see no victim. There's no forced entry, there's no, you know, windows open, none of that stuff. So there's obviously nothing occurred here. And that's one thing about when you respond to these natural deaths, you want to rule out the possibility of a homicide. So you check for burglaries and just all them things just so you won't miss anything. Okay, now, there's no body. Well, I think there's no body. And my partner's like, we got a call, there's a body somewhere. So we called the resident manager's office. The resident manager said, look, all I know is that water's been running, resident people call, they haven't heard from this resident, they think something is wrong. We don't find her. Something just told me to go back to that bathroom. I went back to the bathroom. Now I'm sliding the shower curtain completely open. The body is there dark in complexion, just completely dark from the hot water. And I'm looking at the body and it's like stuck to the tub. So I go back and tell my pot, I'm like, dude, come look at this. So he come look at it. He said, oh, okay, call the image wagon. So he goes back out in the hallway and I go back out in the hallway with him. He said, go do the body. Go do the body I mean writing up your report and everything. I'm like, what? So I have to go and write up everything that I see. 
describe it to a T. So when the ME technician gets there, of course, me being rookie homicide detector, I have to help him put that body in this bag. And oh man, I'm gloved up again, put everything in. I don't have a suit on, but I got the gloves on now. And when I go lift the legs up to the body to put inside the bag, man, the damn legs came off the body. I dropped them, it freaked me out. I'm like, whoa. And oh man, you know, now JC laughed my part, he laughing, because he knew what was gonna happen. The Emmy technician knew what was gonna happen. I didn't know what was gonna happen. And it just, it was, it was just, it freaked me out. But again, as I stated earlier, those situations prepare you for the gunshot victims, the stab victims. Um, it, prepare, it prepares you for the other things you're going to encounter. That's why before you become the murder police, investigating natural deaths, suicides, and things like that, it makes you a better detective when it comes to investigating what happened to victims of gunshots. And then you're able to determine exit entry wounds, um, possibly where the shooters were standing. I mean, it's just a whole bunch of things. Um, stab wounds, um, the direction of the stab wound. I mean, just everything, gunshot wounds, how close, how far. It helps you become a better homicide detective when you go that route of learning about natural deaths. And then you're ready to become the murder police.